Hey guys, we're back. Um, keep going. We hey guys, we're back. Um, this is thank God for the group chat, and I have uh, Tabitha and Victoria here with me. Um, and we are discussing at where I left off was. Um, there is a particular um Christian rapper, and I I'll say this, and I don't care. I don't like Christian rappers. I don't. As people, I don't like. Them. Uh- I don't, you know, cause like you grow up, you grow up, listen, well, I grew up listening to these guys and it's different. That's all I'll say. I don't, That's like, real. I don't like them, yeah. but any, <laughs> anyway, because man, you got these dudes that claim to be from the streets, right. And the claim that, um, have had like a life change and all of this type of stuff. And they very well have, I'm not judging that. But I'm saying, like, if you're from if you're from the streets, you do understand that there is such thing as street code. Mm-hmm. But not, but forget being from the streets. There's such thing as man code, and they don't mm-hmm. abide by man code, let alone street code. But then above that, there is a Christian way that you are to deal with one another, and it almost seems like that always goes out the window. And it's it's so crazy to me. I'm like, you're supposed to be like the thuggiest of thugs in your music, but you don't know how to deal with another man. But I don't digress, but that's a little... I feel like thug, a lot of thuggiest of thugs don't know how to deal with another man. What do you mean? Like when we, I guess I don't understand what you mean when you're saying not knowing how to deal with another man. But well, there's certain ways that you that you know that you need to speak to someone and or address someone. You know what I mean? Um, certain ways of doing things, or you know that you're going to get dealt with. You know what I'm saying? Um, somehow, some way, some form, whatever, whatever it may be, you know that you're going to get dealt with somehow. Um, so you better follow these guidelines. You know what I mean? Whether it be street justice in, in the streets or whether it be, um, you know, like just people don't respect you as a man when it comes to manhood or whether people sit you down or deal with you a certain way when it comes to being in the church. You know what I mean? Like none of these guidelines are followed. <laughs> yeah, I just don't understand it. <laughs> Fake it. thugs. But anyway... <laughs> Um, you know, I may mention of Killer Mike in the irony in his name and um the irony in his name and the speech that he was giving, you know, the, I'm like, it just doesn't compute for me. You know, I just made mention of that. And all of a sudden I'm getting a message from, I guess, a rapper that I respect in, and I guess in ways I still kind of do respect. Um, um, and he was like, yo, that's the problem with black people. That's the, let me, it was like, that's the problem with black people. That's why, because we're always trying to discredit a man that's doing something for the community and discredit his name. And I'm like, I don't think that's what I was doing at all. I think I was just sharing with you guys the clear irony and <laughs> what was happening? I think that's yeah. all I was doing. <laughs> nah, you was trying to get likes. I'm like, wow. fam, fam, I only got like 16 likes on this. I don't <laughs> think that's what I was doing this for. <laughs> I'm kind of almost never doing it for likes. Yeah, you always give the unpopular opinion. <laughs> <laughs> always. <laughs> he was like, oh, this is what y'all think? I think the opposite. <laughs> Right, just because. Right. <laughs> not just because. That's, I really can. How, that's how my mind works. <laughs> yeah. I promise you, that's how my mind works. So, like, for instance, um, but I'll get off him. Well, I'm a, I'm gonna end this, right? So, but I'm like, that's not a that's not a black people problem. You know what I mean? I'm like, this is a killer mic problem. I don't think that you can be mad at people for or not saying that he was even mad, hearing more of what you guys were saying. Because he said that he understood. You know what I mean? But you got this shirt on. Your name is Killer Mike. We hear your music. I listened to The Whole World featuring Killer Mike by Outkast right before I made this post. I know what you were about. I know what your speech was or slash is, depending on the platform that you're on. You know 
know what I'm saying? So I'm not discrediting him. I'm just saying you also can't be mad. In addition to you not being mad, you also cannot be mad at someone that says, uh, nah. Because to you, violence was once, at least was once an option. A violence at least once made sense. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, it's clear. Um, I don't, I didn't get that he was saying not to be violent. I don't, at least that's not what I understood it to okay, say. Okay, okay. I think he was, he, one of the things that he did say, and I, I actually put, he said something about don't burn down the house um, where you live or something like that. It, um, it is your duty not to burn down your own house, burn your own house down for anger with an enemy. So he was saying, don't destroy where you have to sleep because you're mad at somebody else okay. is more of what he's saying. I, I didn't get, and I, maybe I need to go back and listen, but I didn't get that he was saying, don't be violent towards Okay. Him. Just saying, don't mess up your own stuff because you're angry at an enemy with an enemy. I'm I'm with that. I'm with that then. <laughs> but he, it's, it's so many things that like I'm trying to juggle right now. He, uh, so he mentioned, he was like, you know, you, you try to tear down a man that has, and discredit a man that has done this and that for the community, and he's done way more than you in the community, they, or, or more, way more than you could ever do in the community. I was like, I let it go on for a little bit, but when he kept coming back to the whole point that I was doing it for likes, and, and I'm like, he had too much time on his Is he okay? Yeah, really I'm okay. Did. And I think, yeah, he was looking for like he was looking for an issue. He found an issue with Jared though. Cause Jared came in <laughs> and that's why Jared's not on the podcast today. <laughs> Cause I was like, Jared because his wife. <laughs> Jared got in trouble by his wife because he came to my defense, like, this is not what he meant. Where is this post? So and I then it, nah, it. Jared deleted his stuff rightfully. Oh, so. okay. It was rightfully so. Post. Okay, okay. Jared, if I'm militant, Jared is like militia. Um, he is ready to bust heads. Yeah, all the on time. Site. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, I'm like, cause you don't. What you don't want to do is like run down your your list of stuff that you've done for the community. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause it did cross my mind. I was like, fam, I've shaken, I've shaken hands with, with, um, John Lewis. You know what I mean? I've been in rooms with Bernice King. You know what I mean? Like I've marched, I've done this and that, but you can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but you just let, you know, you just let people rock. But, what was the other thing that I wanted to bring up? Because there was something in that. About his name? Did you address more the of his shirt? name? Oh, the I shirt. didn't address the shirt, and I didn't address the name. I just I just think it all spoke for itself. I was just, I'm like, all right, cool. But I can't allow you to keep going on with this rhetoric that I'm doing stuff for likes. Now you, you're impeding upon my my reputation, player. <laughs> Hold <That's> on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Relax. Yeah. Um, we pieced it up. We pieced it up. He said, uh, I said, you know, God bless, you know, and he was like, yo, keep doing what you're doing for the community. I'm like, I don't know if this is sarcastic or satirical, <laughs> but you do it. the same. So. <laughs> uh, but uh, I forget, there was a topic inside of that Killer Mike topic, though. I, I From what I understood it to be was... Um, Never mind. I don't know what I understood it to be. <laughs> See? <laughs> okay. Um, but I, from what I saw you guys sent, like, should his name still be Killer Mike was the question. No. Okay. So that was never the thing for me. I'm like, fine, let your name be Killer Mike, right? Mm-hmm. But is, like, but at what point is your name hurting the message? Hmm. Hmm. But okay. what, what point at what point is the name hurting more than it's helping? I understand that we want to remain close to what we were once doing, you know what I mean, so that we can be more relatable. And I think honestly, I think that was this particular person's issue with me because I was I was I was on their doorstep because they pride themselves on having once been 
um, again, a thug, a person that used weapons and all of this type and caused violence in the neighborhood. Um, but I'm like, is that you anymore? You know what I mean? Like you don't still live this way, do you? You know what I mean? So I'm not, I'm not saying that anybody needs to change their name, but I'm like, we're not always best suit. We're not always a person that's best suited to speak on a particular topic. Yeah, mm. that's real. That's, that's real. that was what I was wanting um, him to get from it. <laughs> I don't even think I so much had an issue with Killer Mike's speech. I think it was more so his speech than followed by Ti's. <laughs> yes, like and, uh, Elena is Wakanda. Listen, I was like, what? In what world? <laughs> Every stop. See how like, I get off social stop. media. Um, first of all, Ti got on the platform with a rainbow shirt, and he's just like, "Y'all need to stay inside." Like Atlanta is Wakanda. Honestly, that ending line ruined. Like it, it, it ruined anything. Anything of substance that he could have said prior to that comment. Tabitha is looking it up. What is that what you were listening to before we got back on? Me? me? Or yeah, Victoria. Who's to? Oh no, it's this guy I follow who lives in New York. Okay. Um but basically I just look at the trifecta um being Keisha Lance Bottoms, Clifford Harris. And mm-hmm. Killer Mike. And for me, I just always see anything that they're doing as like this is a political, this is a political play, this is a money play. It never feels completely genuine to me. Very disingenuous feeling. Yes. And <laughs> <laughs> just like, first, how is this Wakanda? So, okay. One issue is, please stop. Elena, Elena has been very good to us. Please stop that. You can't do this here. <laughs> please stop that. When was Atlanta good to us when they approved all these neighborhoods to be torn down, all these like buildings to be torn, all these neighborhoods to be completely erratic, like wiped of their cultural capital because y'all wanted to make a dollar? Mm. Mm. And so do not sit here and say Atlanta is Wakanda. First of all, we made one movie. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We built a film set and y'all have just worn that into the ground. We are not Wakanda. We have one of the largest affordable housing issues in the country. Mm. Just Mm. because we have a higher density of black people, that does not mean that it is like this land of milk and honey that people always try to make Atlanta out to be for black people. Do you have a greater chance of being prosperous here? Sure, maybe. Maybe. But I don't like maybe. A strong maybe. (laughs) Like People think they land here and like a Benz just comes to pick them up and like a million dollars drops into their bank account. And I'm just like, no, baby. Like, you still have to work. Like, like, you're still going to face this it's like there's still a lot of inequality that happens in this city like I know it looks cute but when they get up there and I'm just and <sighs> T.I. is part of a greater issue that I've had in all of this with like just black celebrities in general just mm. showing their behinds mm. and I just feel like basically the whole thing just felt very fake to me it felt like Keisha was like, I'm in a hot spot. People listen to y'all. So y'all like hear the lines I'm going to feed you. But they are lines that I have gathered from like all the other people behind the scenes with me. Mm. And you're being you're playing puppets at this point. Mm. Mm. I don't believe you. There's no way that you can sit here and be like Atlanta is Wakanda when you see all this like economic disparity happening in this city. When you see the rampant gentrification, not urban revitalization, gentrification happening in this city. And I'm so tired of people trying to paint this picture. It's a false. Stop it. 
I'm I also, wonder from there, from there, as show as say Ebony Towers, are they looking out mm-hmm. and feeling that it is that that way because of their um, position? Um, so For that sure. being one, and then what I will have to say, as me living in Miami and me seeing a difference, um, Atlanta has one of the highest rates, I think, in the top three with blacks that are wealthy um and that are, that are doing well off as as far as it, it goes so um so there that there is a reality when it comes to that that blacks are more wealthy in atlanta than in most any other um cities in the u.s so but th- does that mean that there's not any disparity that blacks doesn't face challenges that there isn't a large population of poor blacks in atlanta absolutely not it doesn't mean that but it does speak to in those ways. So I don't know if they're looking at that and seeing it as that. I don't know. I'm not trying to say. I do I think it's an Ebony Tower that. situation. I think that they have, they are from Atlanta. They made it from some socioeconomic level to another. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's almost like, sometimes it just feels like they're like spewing this, like pull yourself up by your bootstraps. <laughs> Um, thought process. I don't know when people are just like romanticizing Atlanta. Um, and mind you, here's the thing: like I love Atlanta. Like I do love this city so much. I do. I think it's a be like yes to your point, Tabitha. Like we do have a higher concentration of like more successful black people. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But again, it just goes back to that like. That homeless rate is high too. It is. I'm just like, if y'all actually like saw this, like <laughs> you actually like saw the city and like paid attention to certain things. Like my biggest gripe with Atlanta to this day will always be what they did with the Beltline. I w- I don't think I will yeah. ever hmm. ever get over that, and what that did, like what greed, money, and like people like being in bed with each other did to this, like further did to this city. Um. But yeah, I'm like, I don't believe y'all. Yeah. T.I. was up there like Atlanta wasn't open. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What do you mean? <laughs> he didn't have no haircut. None of that. <laughs> he had on that ugly shirt. That shirt was terrible. <laughs> I really have to see this. So those are two so things bad. that I have all worked. You know, <laughs> so watch this and um, Kurt Franklin and uh, Fred Hammond. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, what, what else? Okay, so um, I'm sure you guys. I'm, I mean, much to your chagrin and much to you know, as much as we don't want to, we've been keeping up with uh, the George uh, Floyd situation. So. Uh, did we talk about that last week? Did that happen Wednesday? It happened on um, Memorial Day. So you guys probably would have. No, I don't we think we recorded on Memorial Day. We recorded on. We like, didn't talk about it. I don't Why think did we, we not did. talk about it. Well, maybe if you all recorded on Monday of last week, it, it may have happened late after. Yeah. yeah. Same time. Oh, we heard about it later. After, yeah. yeah. So if you have been li- living under. As Lon would say, um, this Lon says this for every transition. So if you live on the rock, <laughs> <laughs> love you, Lon. Love you, bro. Um, there would be no show without Lon Richardson. Um, if you've been living under a rock, uh, George Floyd of Minneapolis. Was he from Minneapolis? Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Or was he from Houston? He's I think he was Houston. from. Min- I thought he was from Minneapolis, but working in Houston. Or I don't no, know. No, it, it, ha- it, it happened in Minneapolis. Yeah, I thought it was the opposite. And well, from my See, understanding, it's the opposite because um, I, I don't know, like born and raised from, but I do know he was has been living in Houston, and then he had been in Minneapolis. Um, and I don't know all the details, so I don't want to say it wrong, but I do know that friends of mine, you know, knew him in Houston and mm-hmm. he would like help with things and setting up for church and stuff like that and, and help him with different things that they were doing to give back in in certain communities. So I know he was living in Houston um, at some point, whether he's in Minneapolis now or not, I don't know. Um, 
He lives there now. He the Chris, okay. the rapper uh, Reconcile um, was speaking to um, the work that he did, not only for the community, but for the kingdom of God, um, yeah. like where he was uh, uh, helping them put together baptism pools so that yeah. people in the community could, could, could get baptized. Um, that raised a, a thing for me. That raised up an issue for me that I never thought was an issue, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when people try to qualify a person like as black people we 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 just feel the need to qualify people that have passed away due to something like this you know what i mean no 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 not 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 i'm not mad at us for yeah. doing it mm-hmm. i'm not it's not us we do it is it is very second nature to to do that because it's like this this person's life had value you know what I mean um, notice what he did in the community look at what a great loss this was but and I'm not I'm not mad at it but I do think that it can be um, problematic like anything it can be problematic yeah. because because I'm I try to put myself. Like you know, when stuff like this happens, I automatically put myself in the white in the mind of a white person. Like, how are y'all going to try to discredit this? How are y'all going to try to justify why he was killed? Now you're like, well, Ahmaud Arbery, he wasn't he wasn't a class citizen, by the way, because he's got these cases open. I'm like, yo, it don't justify y'all killing him in cold right. blood in the street. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I get what you're saying in the sense of like it doesn't give credit to whether he should have been killed or not, regardless of what level of citizen he was, regardless of his criminal background or any of that. At the same time, I see it as you're going to paint a narrative of who Mm. you felt he was. And let me let you know, if I know him, I want you to know the type of person that I knew. So if I die, I don't, I expect for one of y'all to say something about me that says I'm different. Like if they come in my, if, if that was me on the ground, like I don't want the narrative that to be so loud that, Oh, when she was in high school, you know, she was, you know, this happened. Like, I don't mm-hmm. want you to bring up that one sin that, that was public made known and that is what rings loud for my name. I want those who know me to have to what be you able doing to high school? my nerves and none of your business. Oh. <laughs> <It's actually laughs> you of all people that would have stuck with. But no, no, no. You know, it, I got in a fight in high school and they did take us to jail for that. Oh. Yeah, just I guess the county that I'm in, that's how they handled that. Um, and so. Edit point. <laughs> I, I'm, right. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about it. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I'm I ain't really concerned not. about it. <laughs> no, they're not in that way. But if it, if if I was, I wouldn't have said it. But just saying, like, <laughs> I don't want. I, I see why people do it because let me give you this first. Let me give you a bio of this person. You know, and, I lo- and I love it's that. crazy though. In the same sense that we have to do that. Mm-hmm. But if not, like there, it will be, it, it would just be one side out about what, who he was. Um, but yeah, cause we don't have to do that. No one else have to do that, you know? So it's, it's weird, but I understand it. Thank you, Chad. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Um, it's a great perspective. Um, to further, for, to further along the story, not story to further along what happened. Um, Apparently, um, George George Floyd was in Minneapolis, and uh, I think he gave a clerk or cashier a bad, either a bad check or a bad twenty dollar bill. Um, that is still up in the air, um, but they were they uh, came to arrest him, quote unquote, arrest him. Um, for forgery, 
Um, so it might have been a check or a bad check that he wrote or something yeah. like that. Um, they pulled, they proceeded to pull him out of the car. Um, I have not watched the video. I do not plan on watching the video. Same. As I as I have told um, many people that this video is not for people that know what is going on in America. This video mm-hmm. is for everyone else that tries to act like stuff like this does not happen. Um, right. But so... They proceeded to pull him out of the car, apprehend him. He did not resist. He was crying out for help. He even cried out for his mother at some point. This is a grown man. Um, And that's not to say anything against him. That is like, fam, I've I've done nothing wrong and I fear for my life. Um, One of the officers takes it upon himself to um, go against um, police protocol to go against anything that they train you to do at the police academy and put his knee on his neck, thereby suffocating him. And um, George Floyd died from um, asphyxiation. Um, It came out today. Um, it came out today from an, a new autopsy because they did That's didn't, what I figured would happen. Yeah, That's why yeah. I said his family that better first one tried it. the autopsy done because we knew he was paid off. He or mm-hmm. she, we knew they were paid off. They um, worked in very close um, circumference with the police station. Um, the people who did the previous autopsy, the false autopsy that said he died due to previous... Um, Pre-existing health condition. conditions. Yeah. Yes. Well, even still, that should indict you. You know, I mean that should incriminate you because these situations these, you know, these uh conditions would not have been activated in such a way if I wasn't under such trauma in this moment. But um so they charged him with I forget the police officer's name. I don't care about his name. I'll I'm pretty sure I'll figure it out after it being stuck in my head like George Derek, Derek Chauvin. Derek. There we go. Derek Chauvin, Chauvin, something like that. So thank you. Derek Chauvin, he, uh, they charged him. He is now arrested after, you know, days of protest. And that's why it began the protest. And that's the thing. We're continuing to protest. We're like, we arrested him. So, so right. convict him. You know what I mean? Because so many other people have gotten off. They, um, there's a post circulating about how Mike Vick, who served two and a half years for killing dogs has served more time than any police officer has for these types of crimes. And yes, they are crimes. I don't care if you've been convicted of it or not. Um, so, um, George, uh, George, uh, Derek Chauvin, um, Murdered him. They're all Georges, all George Zimmerman's, but go ahead. <laughs> no, jo- I'm, I was confusing it with George Floyd. Okay. But, um, so, but there were other cops involved. There were three other cops involved that were, were waiting to be charged and prayerfully sentenced. So we will continue to pray for that. As believers, it is not wrong to pray for justice. It is not wrong to pray that because I have that issue sometimes. Just like, man, what if I don't want them to go? I don't want to see anybody go to jail. No, nope. no, go to jail. And, and so <laughs> they, um, they, um, they charged him at first with a uh, third degree murder. I looked up third degree murder. I was like, I don't like the degree of this, but I don't know the degrees. So let me look up third degree murder. Third degree murder is basically manslaughter mm-hmm. in the state Which of Which is a lot Minneapolis. lesser sentence. You can yeah. serve up to 25 years for third degree murder. Third degree murder is like you, it's manslaughter, basically, essentially. Give Like more or less, it's manslaughter. Um, Just in case anyone doesn't know, like even from that, like it's basically like, un- like you've unintentionally Killed someone. Killed someone. Yeah. That's what man, but don't manslaughter sound worse than murder? It does. <laughs> but it I, th- sound, and I think but that's the thing, though. I think it sounds like so much more like intense. Manslaughter. Like, the intent, the intent, it's just like they're basically saying like you unintentionally slaughtered someone. Yep. Man, so it doesn't yeah. hold as much weight, but the yeah. word does sound like, worse, Oh, it was so. an accident. Mm-hmm. Like we got to punish you, but like you... Your intent was not to kill like, this person. If you under, if you want to understand how um, 
how light manslaughter is. Brandy has a man. Brandy was convicted of manslaughter. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, love, yeah, because like love Brandy, car accident. love car Brandy, accident. but Brandy was out here living. You know what I mean, you know, no jail time that I know of, just living life. You know, um, she feels very traumatic and still has nightmares about the situation. So, That's but you know, Brandy served virtually no time, if any at all. Um, so he killed this man. And uh, they were trying to cover it up and say that he he died of other causes when this autopsy today came out saying that, no, he died of, uh, of uh, you know, strangulation, basically. Um, I'm glad I didn't know another autopsy was done. Um, at some points, I've kind of tried to pull away a bit because it, it just becomes too much and it. Yeah, for my own heart, my own health, I had to, but I didn't know. And I, but I really hoped and prayed that another autopsy would be done because I don't know who they thought they were going to get over with that. We, we were just like, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> no, come on, stop playing with us. You know, we are not dumb. Think we're stupid. I don't appreciate it. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't either. I didn't either. I don't either. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to say to this? Um, I think that this was a breaking point for people. And that's why we are seeing the protests, those that are peaceful. And we are seeing the riots that are taking place because this was a breaking point. When I heard about it on um, Monday night or um, and I was talking to my mom, I was with my family at the time. And so I was talking with my mom about it. And I was like, oh, it, it, this is it. And so it, this is it because one, we're tired of our bodies being slain and there's absolutely no regard for it. Um, so that there's a tiredness when it comes to that, but then also to that tiredness of no real justice being served. So yes, um, you may lock them up. And and what I noticed when I first saw it, and although we can't trust media outlets, but two or three media outlets, when they first um, spoke of Derek being taken into custody, it seemed like he was being taken into protective custody. It didn't mm. seem like he was being arrested at first, but mm. then after it started saying arrested, it was just saying, um, you know, protests are breaking out and Derek shot, um, has been taken into state custody. So I'm like, wait, what does that mean? Are y'all protecting him or mm. are y'all charging him right now? And then maybe like the next day or so was when I noticed that um, charges were being brought against him. Um, and to me, the problem that the re- some of the reason why we're so tired right now is because why do things have to be made world? Why does worldwide notice have to come before some action being taken? Why do people have to reach out and make all of these calls before you do it? Why is justice not being served in the same way as me, a black person? If I go out and kill anybody, you're immediately coming to lock me up, whether it was self-defense or not. Um, Mm. Even if I'm living in a self-defense state, like Mm. I am automatically assumed guilty until I can prove my innocence. But it's never that way for um, white people or people that are not black, especially when the person that was murdered is a black person. It's never that way for them. Mm. They're always innocent until they are proven guilty. We are always guilty until we are proven it until we can. If we have the resources to prove ourselves innocent, because some of the time we can't even prove ourselves innocent if we can't afford an attorney and we go with the attorney that is covered by the state that's covered by that county that is trying to help that prosecutor win at times because that's just how they work, you know? Mm. So it's crazy. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I just hope that we don't lose this fire. Like I need this. I need this energy to maintain. I feel like a lot of the times for a plethora of compounding reasons, you know, these stories break, someone's arrested, someone's charged, no one's ever convicted. And then I feel like things just kind of like dissipate. Yeah. And some sense of normalcy returns. And my hope in this is just like, no, like keep pushing 
on these issues Mm -hmm. because it is not, it is not, granted, yes, this is for George Floyd, but this is for a greater issue. And I don't want people to forget or lose sight of that. There is a grand change that needs to happen. Honestly, I'm like, Lord, if you would just like to, you know, strike some hammers like that would be great. Um, but I, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm holding my breath in all of this. Cause I'm just like the fight, ha- like the energy has to be maintained. And that's honestly what I'm worried about, especially when you have, all these other forces coming against us to like quell protest or deter protesting. And it's just like, I'm just hoping people's eyes are being open to what like these curfews do and what, you know, basically letting these police officers run rampant in the street does, or just being aware of like these radical like agitators who come out and they're really only there for the chaos. Like, I don't want these, like, I hate that there are these things that distract from why we're here. And I'm really hoping that this time around, like, I'm just like, please just stay focused. Yeah. Yes. Don't stop. Right. Next podcast. I want to do a, I want to do a brief history. I want to do a brief talk on the history of police. Um, Mm. Police. Um, is a is a fairly young concept, um, you know. Uh, prior to people police themselves and govern themselves, there was a government in place, and there were certain things in place. But police officers, as they are today, is it's like a hundred years old or less. Um, so, well, like around a hundred years old or something like that. Not it's nothing crazy. Um, especially how they are today. Um, police officers are su- literally supposed to protect and to serve, and they are supposed to work for us. Um, I- I'll say us in quotes because I also am of the belief that um, we don't literally have any rights as black people. Uh, that's I don't push that off on anybody else, but um, I-, I see like the loopholes that, they're able to slip through and all of that type of stuff because it was never like actually written down to say that black people now have rights as well. Um, As far as I know, we're still um, one third of a person. Three fifths. Three fifths. Yeah. Three fifths. We're a fraction of a person. Mm -hmm. Um, If I could just have maybe 10 more, uh, 10 10 more minutes of you guys' time. I have a very, poignant topic to talk about before we get off. Um, it is in regards to um, Shamik, Shamik Moore. Oh, let's get into it. I can't stand him. <laughs> I'm sorry. When we, on that note, we will be right back. You don't want to miss this, apparently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 